G'day and welcome back for another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we're going to make a fighter drone. This is a fighter drone that's going to launch from a mobile platform. It's going to patrol around that mobile platform and move with it as the platform moves. And then if it detects a target, it's going to engage that target and keep shooting it until either it's dead, it's run out of ammunition, or it's run low on power. And if it runs low on power or ammunition, it's going to return and dock to this connector all on its own. And as you might imagine, that's going to involve a few blocks. We are going to actually make use of every single AI block. We're going to use a flight, a defensive, an offensive, a basic, and a recorder. All of them are going to be needed to make this thing work. So in order to organize this into a way that's a bit easier to follow, we're going to break it into chunks. We're going to have our launch and patrol chunk. Then we're going to have our intercept chunk. And then we're going to have our return chunk. And we're going to do the launch and return first. And then add in the intercept behaviors once we've got a drone that can fly away and come back all on its own. So to begin with, what we need to do is place down the stuff that's going to allow this drone to fly away. It needs a move block. Now this block needs to be placed in a specific orientation, but it doesn't need to be placed in a specific position. As you can see on the sides of it, it's got an F on the front, an R on the right, rear panel, left, etc. in order to help you place it the right way. I'm going to place mine here. Then we next, for this part, need to have a basic task block. This doesn't have any particular orientation, it doesn't have any particular positioning it requires, so you can put it anywhere. We're going to leave this spot directly over the connector for another block later, so let's pop our basic task block here. And that's all we need in order to get this thing moving. Well, aside from the fact that this is a fully functional drone with six directions of thrust, a gyroscope and a power source, and importantly, a power source that doesn't run out of power while in flight. So if we jump in here, turn our thrusters on and unlock, you can see that when I move with thrust in three directions, I only use up 60% of my power. You want to make sure when you build a drone that it never maxes on power. Because if it maxes out on power, you're going to lose power to the drone controls. And that can cause some very frustrating, very frustrating behavior. So we'll avoid that by making sure we have enough power. And in this case, we do. When our drone launches from this platform, we're going to want a number of things to happen. And one of the best ways to organize a number of things to happen across a bunch of different types of blocks is to use timer blocks. So let's add one now for our launch control. Pop it down there. Let's hop into this control seat that's really just here for my convenience. And we'll rename this timer block to timer block launch. With that done, let's set up our flight move and our basic task blocks. For the flight block, what we want during our initial phase of flight and we're just talking about while we're doing our patrol maneuvers. We want collision avoidance on. We want precision mode. It can be either on or off. It doesn't actually matter. But we'll need it on for other things later. So let's just turn it on. We want a speed limit that's high. Because this is a combat drone. It needs to go fast. We want a minimum altitude that allows us to actually approach this connector. And this connector is probably no more than 7.5 meters off the ground or at least the bottom of the connector is. So let's drop our minimum altitude down to five meters. We would prefer our drone to align to planetary gravity because a lot of the maneuvers that it's going to attempt to do are safer if they're performed aligned to the planetary gravity. Now, if you're doing this in space, you can obviously ignore this, but for working on a planet, it's probably best just to leave it on. Our pitch angles are fair for this drone because this drone can actually operate at any angle whatsoever. It has enough thrust to keep itself off the ground even if it's completely upside down. But you'll need to adjust these dependent on how much thrust you have in your lateral, forward, backwards and down directions to make sure you don't allow the drone to over tip itself and end up crashing because it doesn't have enough thrust to keep itself in flight. Now, our basic task block. We want this to follow a home because the home is our mobile platform. For this, we can pick any beacon that we have in range. So we're going to pick our mobile platform and we're going to allow this to 
stray up to, let's say, 800 meters from base. If you want to make that accurate, you can control click on the slider and type it in. And maybe our minimum range from home will be 150 meters, so that it doesn't get too close to us in case we do some sudden maneuvers and don't realize it's there and slap it out of the sky. And we want it to wander when idle, because that's how it's going to do its patrol maneuvers. So, for our launch setup, what we need to do is head to our timer block and head to Setup Actions. When we click Setup Actions, we're offered a screen very similar to a G menu, where we can now get these blocks to do specific actions. In this case, for launch, we want the AI to start doing things. We want the basic task block to start doing its thing, to get the drone to patrol. We need the move block so the task block can actually give those movement instructions. So we'll turn it on as well. You may notice that my thrusters are currently off. So we're going to need to turn them all on. The reason I've got my thrusters off is because when they're on, you can see all this dust and smoke and stuff, and eventually they may cause damage to the ship. But also, even if they're not going to cause damage, they're going to waste a lot of power as we move around the large grid that we're attached to, and this keeps fighting all of those movements. We've got two options for dealing with that, though. We can either turn off our dampeners, which will then clean everything up, or we can turn off the thrusters. In this case, we want to turn off the thrusters. The reason for that is when we're using a timer block, our options for turning blocks on and off are separated. We've got a toggle on and we've got a toggle off, which means we can know exactly what state that block is going to be in when that timer block is triggered. However, for dampeners, we've only got an on-off, mixed command. So in this case, if it gets to the wrong state at the wrong time, we can end up with things all messed up. So it's actually much safer just to turn the thrusters off. And to make things even more weird, I'm going to do it block by block. We're going to turn them all on as we disconnect. And I'm not going to use a group because there's a very decent chance that with a fighter like this, you're not going to want just one. You're going to use multiple and you're probably going to use a projector to print it off. And that means if they've all got the same group name, they'll all start affecting each other and it gets really, really messy. So it's much better if we use a timer block to individually attach to these specific blocks and that will attach to this specific grid too. So that will work with that printer system whereas groups will have a habit of breaking quite badly. Timer block launch. It's going to turn on our AI blocks and it's going to turn on our thrusters. It also probably needs to disconnect us from the connector. Given the number of things that we've been trying to do, I've separated this onto multiple hotbars. You can go between the hotbars with control and the number keys. For our connector, we need to grab our drone connector and click unlock. And now, if I go to this timer block and stay trigger now, our ship should take off and start flying around. Here we go. And it's working. All flying around. It'll start doing little random patrols around. It'll follow us if we start dry if the main grid starts driving off. But we have no way to make this land. <laughs> so that's the next thing. In order to set that up, we're going to need to turn off our AI behavior for our basic task block and for our move block so that we can regain control of this drone and take it back to our base. The next part of this behavior I covered in the previous tutorial, although in that case I was doing it to lock down to a static grid. To lock down to a mobile grid, there are a few extra steps. But we're still going to be using the recorder task block in order to get this to lock down. And we're going to place it directly in line with the line that would be drawn between the center of these two connectors. Somewhere along that line you want to place the recorder block. This is less important with static grids, but with mobile grids I've found that if I don't do this, my success rate with getting this to connect up is a little bit reduced. So, let's grab our recorder task block and place it there. For our return to base, we're going to need two more timer blocks. One that's going to do all the actions to send us to our base, and one to do all the actions once we get in range of the connector. So we'll add two more timer blocks, and start getting this set up. If we have a look at our recorder task block, there are a few things that are important to do before we start recording our waypoints. We need to make sure we have selected our reference beacon. And our reference beacon actually has to be a beacon. It can't be an antenna. As you can see, this antenna says, you can't see me. And if we go into that list, 
You'll see that you can't see me, but you can see the mobile platform, which is the beacon right there. So we'll select that, and now all of the waypoints we record are going to be recorded in relative positions to that beacon, so this drone is going to be able to return to this mobile platform regardless of where it is. If we didn't select that first, we're going to have arbitrary waypoints based off the global positioning, and so that's not going to move with the grid as we go. With that done, we can now add to our hotbar, just for the sake of convenience, this recorder block with add waypoint. We'll unlock, we'll switch off the connector, and we do want to switch off the connector because that allows us to push down just that little bit closer for this final waypoint, which I found makes it much more likely that this is able to connect. We then create a waypoint here. Move up a few meters, create another waypoint, move up a few more meters, create another one, go backwards a bit along a safe path towards our connector and add another one. And then we can go into our recorder and reverse the order of those waypoints. Because right now, this starts at the connector and ends here, and we want it to do the opposite. So we'll click reverse order, and now it starts here and goes to the connector. Before we go on to set up anything else, let's make sure that this path actually works. To do that, I'm gonna add play from my recorder block onto my hotbar, and I'm going to add the move block with an AI behavior on off command. So, now the move block's in control of the ship, and now the recorder is going to tell it where to go. It's flying in. It's doing some weird things. <laughs> Trying to find those waypoints. Coming down. Going up. Doing some very strange <laughs> maneuvers. But it, it got there. It got there. Really awkwardly. There are two reasons that that flight there was so awkward. One, we've got collision avoidance on. And two, we've got a line to planetary gravity on. So if we turn a line to planetary gravity off and turn collision avoidance off, we should now be able to get this drone to fly much more sensibly towards the connector. Okay, so to test this out, let's turn on our autopilot and turn on our recorder block. So we're heading towards the first waypoint. It's gonna fly from here to the second one. You can already see that its behavior is a lot more like what we've recorded when we made these waypoints. And we move nice and perfectly down onto this connector. Neat. Now that the drone is approaching the connector properly, we can set up a timer block to lock us down to the connector. Timer block connect. Set up actions. What we want it to do is lock down our connector and turn off all of our thrusters. Same as in the previous tutorial, set the delay to about two seconds. That allows the connectors to align the drone nice and neatly before they lock. So we can set up our recorder to trigger that timer block at waypoint three. So let's set up our action. We'll grab our timer block connect and select start because that'll do the countdown. So let's just test that out before we get too excited. Autopilot on, play on our recorder block. When I'm setting something like this up, I do like to test it at every phase because it means you can be sure that everything is working as you're going along and it prevents a lot of problems down the line. There we go, locked. Thrusters off, perfect. That's all working nicely. Now you may have noticed that in the process of setting up our locking condition, I've messed up the settings for our launch and patrol condition. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our launch timer now sets up those conditions for us and our return turns off those conditions and sets us up for landing. So the conditions that we changed were on the move block, we've turned collision avoidance off, so we're gonna turn it on at launch. We're also going to select align to P gravity on slash off. Unfortunately, in this case, we don't have an option for on or off. If we did, I would just use on. Hopefully this won't get messed up, but since we don't have an option, it's the best we've got. So we'll use align to P gravity on slash off. And then we'll make sure that we set it up on the other end for a return. So let's grab the other timer block and set it up for return. Timer block return. Set up actions. And then we're going to select our basic task block and turn AI behavior off for it. And we're going to select our AI recorder block and select play. Because play for a recorder block also turns it on. 
Then for the changes we need to make for the AI flight move block, we're actually going to do those with the recorder block, not with this timer block. The reason for that is this action is going to happen when the drone is far away from the base. So we don't want to turn off collision avoidance or alignment to planetary gravity until it's close to our base. The drone will be close to our base when it reaches waypoint zero. So we can set up an action here and we're going to select our AI flight move block and we're going to turn collision avoidance off at the first one and then at the second one we're going to turn off a line to planetary gravity. If you're wondering why I set up four waypoints, in my testing I found that four waypoints was kind of the sweet spot where it worked the vast majority of the time. Any more waypoints and it didn't seem to make a difference, any fewer and I started to run into more problems than I was comfortable with. But feel free to experiment with your own setups and maybe reducing those if it concerns you. In theory, that should be all we need to do to be able to manually trigger this to start going on a patrol and manually trigger it to return to base. Let's test that out. We grab our timer block launch and click trigger now so it instantaneously activates. And now we're flying around. And it'll do its patrol. And if we're tired of it patrolling, we can then grab our timer block return. And in 10 seconds, if I hit the start button, it's going to trigger and send this back to base. Let's make sure that that actually works. Three, two, one, zero. And you can see the colors on the drone, on the AI blocks changed as that happened. We are now returning to base and we return to the first waypoint at a decent speed. The further we are away, the faster this will go. Unfortunately, once we reach that first waypoint, this drone goes really slowly. And so what you're going to need to do is make sure that your main grid has come to almost a complete halt in order for the drone to be able to lock down when it's on its final approach. Our flight move block now has collision avoidance off and it has align to P gravity off. And we've locked and everything's off. Perfect. So we've got a drone that can now return manually. Let's start adding some automated functions to its return. So for that, we're going to need a couple of event controllers. Event controllers allow us to trigger actions on certain things happening. And in this case, the two things happening that we want this drone to return on, you can certainly add more, but these are the two that I'm going to do for the tutorial. The two actions are going to be power and ammunition. So if we grab our event controller and we'll rename this one to event controller ammo and this one to event controller battery. We can grab the ammo one and we want to use a cargo filled percent for this. Anytime it's running low on ammunition or has run out of ammunition, so that will be equal or less than. And in this case, we can leave this at 10% because we're going to keep an eye on our warfare Gatling guns. So whenever these Gatling guns run out of ammo, that's when we want this to come home. The action we want this to trigger is going to be activating the timer block for return. So if we go timer block return and trigger now because we want it to instantaneously activate it and send our drone home. For our battery we do a similar thing. We select the event, we draw, scroll down through this list, we find stored power percent equal or less than. I'd probably want this to return with say 15% The Warfare battery is its only battery. And we're going to do the same and we're going to trigger that return block now. Quickly test these out. Make sure we've got some ammunition in the guns, which we don't. So we'll pop some in both. And now we can send our drone out to go, well, patrol and not do much else. Because <laughs> that's all we've set up so far. If I go down here and I grab this ammunition out, which will then make this gun empty, they're going to switch, and we're now heading back home. Since I'm in creative mode, I can't test the power system, but it works the same way. Even if I put the ammunition back in, it's still going to continue on the same path because we haven't got the event controller looking for when the ammunition goes back up. It only looks for when it goes down. So now we've got ammunition, we've got return conditions that are automatically happening. Now we just need to find a target, lock that target, shoot that target, until we run out of ammo. And for that we're going to need both a defense block and an offense block. 
So our defensive combat block, much like the basic task block, does not need a specific orientation or positioning. You can put it anywhere. We'll pop it there. And same with the offensive block, it can be placed anywhere. Now we're going to want another timer block for this. This timer block is going to be activated when we detect a target. And that's the reason for the defense block. If we have a look in these two AI blocks, the defensive block has an option to set up actions if you have a flee trigger, whereas the offensive block does not. With our defensive block, we can turn flee trigger to always because we want it to activate any time this defensive block finds a target, and it can lock targets up to two and a half kilometers away, as long as there's nothing interfering with line of sight. We do need to select a location to flee to, even though it's not actually going to do that. But it does need to be selected for this to be active. Before we set up our actions, let's name our timer block. So this is going to be called timer block intercept. Grab our defensive block, set up our actions, and the intercept timer block. There it is. We're going to trigger now. That intercept block is going to be used to activate our offensive block. So let's set it up first. We're going to want it to attack enemies. We're going to want it to target the closest target. Yeah, I think that seems reasonable in this case. Surge interval 30 seconds is quite reasonable. You don't want to set that too low because then it'll keep trying to change targets and it may not actually manage to engage properly. For our attack pattern, I think let's use... Yeah, we can use circle orbit and we'll orbit at, say, 500 meters. That gives us a reasonable chance of hitting our target with a bit of a reduced chance of our target hitting us because we're small and mobile. We're going to circle in planetary gravity in this case. Obviously, if this is a space-based thing, you don't want this, but because we're in planetary gravity, I'm going to enable this. And I did this setup in planetary gravity because it's actually more complex here. We can just ignore that altogether and turn it off for everything if we're in space. Then we need to select our guns that we're going to add. Click add weapons. That means it's going to have a way to actually target now. So let's think about this. At the time we want to activate our intercept timer block, that's when our defensive block has locked a target. When the drone is in that situation, we've got our basic task block running and doing its patrol routes. We've got our defensive block running and looking for targets. And we've got our offensive block disabled. So we want to flip those states. We want to turn off our basic task block and stop patrolling because we want to go shoot. So we'll turn the AI behavior off. We also want to turn off the defensive block because we want to let the offensive block take over targeting. So we'll turn its behavior off. And then, since we want to be offensive now, we're going to turn our AI behavior on for our offensive block. And that's everything we need to do there. Since we've recently added a couple of blocks, including the defensive block, we need to include them in the launch sequence. So we'll grab our launch timer block, set up actions, grab our defensive, and turn AI behavior on. Now that we've added the defense block to the launch sequence, we also need to add it to the return sequence. And we need to add the offensive block here too, because it's possible the drone may go out on patrol, not actually find a target, and need to return because it's run out of power. So we'll turn the defensive block behavior off here, and we'll turn the offensive block behavior off here too, in case we have engaged a target and started running out of ammunition, because we want to stop it engaging that target when it runs out of ammo. And now, We've basically got it all set up. Let's give it a go. In the distance, we can see a target saying, I'm a bad guy at 2.61 kilometers away. So let's launch our drone. From our cockpit of our mobile platform, we can add our timer block for our launch sequence to our hotbar. So we can press G, grab our timer block launch, which is here, and select trigger now. So I can launch our drone. It's going to start flying away. We can drive away happily, go where we want. And if we start moving towards that enemy base, this is going to, within the limits of its patrol route that it's allowed to do, it will eventually get itself within a targeting range of this bad guy base and start to engage. Oh, helpful tree. I wanted to stop there. So let's go up and follow our drone and see when it gets that target and watch what happens to all of our controls. Now obviously because we set this to patrol at a fair distance, it's not going to get itself in range of that target immediately. Right now it's 2.84 k's away. 
but because of the random locations it's going to choose for where it's going to fly to, it should get itself in range fairly soon. And defensive combat block, searching for enemies. It's found an enemy, it's disabled itself with that timer block, and our offensive controller is now searching for enemies. And now we have locked the bad guy test target, and we're going to go in and engage. We're going to start shooting. There we go. We're starting to shoot the target. The drone should continue to move on its attack profile, and it'll keep doing that until it runs out of ammunition. It's going to circle around the target, keep shooting. Make itself a little bit more difficult to hit, but, you know, no problem still being taken out. It's not going to pay attention to trees, though, so let's run it out of ammunition before it runs into one and send it back home. That's part two in my tutorial series for the AI blocks. The next thing I want to do is build myself some missiles. If you've got any questions about how I approached this and why I didn't use event controllers, hint, it's because they don't work right now, but hopefully they'll be fixed. Uh, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, keep an eye out for that missile tutorial because that's going to be a whole lot of fun. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.